Hi, I'm Ben Goretsky, and I am the owner and founder and operator of DesignerCon. So DesignerCon is a convention, and it's held once a year currently. And basically it's a cumulative of everything cool, collectible that has a design element to it. If there is an artist involved in some apparel, some toy, some resin piece, some two-dimensional art, some digital art collectible, DesignerCon embraces that. We embrace the designer community and we bring it all under one roof for the collectors and fans to enjoy and hopefully buy some really shit. <laughs> in 2003, I started 3D Retro. When I started 3D Retro, it was strictly online. It was an online store, that was it. My other job, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna start this online store for myself so I can try things out. But as 3D Retro grew, and because I didn't have an in-store, it was kind of like, how am I gonna engage the collector audience? At the time, there was another small show in Pasadena for the collectors out there it was called Keyology. And it was based around Toy 2R, which is a company out of Hong Kong that did keys. And um, it was also once a year show. And I was like, this is great. I love the show. I'm going to keep coming here. This is fantastic. Well, the show itself never came back. And after a while of waiting and waiting and hoping and waiting, I was like, I can't wait anymore. I might as well just do this myself. And I talked to other retailers and distributors. And at the time, I mean, there were like maybe three or four brands out there and maybe like four or five other shops. And I was like, if, if I do this show, will you show up? And will you have a booth or will you have a table? And everyone was like, yeah. And that was the first designer con which was actually called vinyl toy network and it was in pasadena it was an 1100 square foot room i remember it had 10 tables in it for 10 vendors we had maybe maybe 100 people show up and we all had a blast and that was the beginning of designer con from vinyl toy network we grew into designer con we changed the name in 2009 because we were, were trying to get more vendors in that were part of the community already, but this notion of the vinyl toy network, like we don't do vinyl toys, so we changed the name to DesignerCon. And we grew inside Pasadena until 2017. And anybody that went to the 2017 show knows that at one point the line wrapped around the entire block and then came back to the front of the convention center and then started wrapping around the block again. And even though it was extremely exciting for us, it was also terrifying. And in 2018, when we were planning things out with the city of Pasadena, we realized that the city could not accommodate us. And they were actually talking about downsizing the amount of space that we would be able to have. We made the plan to move to another location and we came to the conclusion that Anaheim would be the next home in 2018. Anaheim being one of the largest convention centers in the West Coast, they were treating us really well in terms of like the arrangements and the agreement and honestly because uh, the ability for the show to grow, we decided to move to Anaheim and plus we wanted to get more international vendors involved. But the only way that these guys would get involved is if they were able to have a booth that would just not fit into Pasadena. And with the growth in Anaheim, we were able to accommodate that growth, those booths, those vendors, and off we went running in Anaheim. Am I proud of how, how far Decon has come? Yeah, I mean, yes. Absolutely. The show is a beast, but with it comes a lot more hurdles and just things that we have to run. This is not the show that we started back in the day where we had to worry about like, do we have enough chairs <laughs> for the tables? We have to deal with so much more in running a major convention because that's what it is. We have Things like security, things like staffing for registration, things like 
making sure that the fire marshal doesn't shut us down in the beginning of the show. The point is, the, the show is so big and it's so legitimate now that um, even though it is a crowning moment for us and at the end of the day we are so proud of what we accomplish, it's a lot of work. And sometimes I, I do sit back and I go like, holy moly, like what a beast this thing has become. But at the end of the day, I'm like, holy moly, what a beast this thing has become. This is awesome. A lot of people ask me, like, if, I, if the whole place was on fire and I had to grab one thing out of this office, that's the one thing I would grab. I would grab the, the hoverboard, the Back to the Future hoverboard, actually made by Mattel, and it's signed by the entire cast. <laughs> out of all the things, I wouldn't even grab the four-foot dissected cause that's sitting right underneath it. We are in my office. This is my office uh, attached to the 3D Retro store, that way. And this is where I do all my work, basically. This is my collector's den. This is my home for the toys. This is the stuff that the kids don't get to touch, I guess. But yeah, this, this is my office. And even though it looks crazy, this is where I get my ideas because Sometimes when you're stuck and all you have to do is like look around you and you'll be like, oh, that's a good idea. Or like if we can do that, I'm like, so yeah, this is, this is my, this is my bat cave, <laughs> I guess you could say. So this is my current office, but we are going to be moving. So 3D Retro, which we've been here for 10 years, we're going to the next phase. We're going to be moving and uh, we're going to be leaving our home here in Glendale, California and we're going to Las Vegas. We are first and foremost, we're a store. We're a collectible store and we love introducing a new audience to this concept of art toys and collectibles. We love when people come in and we're like, what the heck is this stuff? Like, this is not the toys that you find at Target or Walmart or the big brands. This is all unique and it's from all over the world. So a lot of the times people will walk in and they'll walk around the store and they'll look and you know, for the most part, they'll be like, I don't get this. I don't get this. I don't, oh, this is really cool. What is this? You know, it's like, there's always something for everyone. There's something for the kids. So first and foremost, yeah, we're a store, but we're also a community. We, we have collectors come by and all we do is we talk and we chat and, you don't have to buy anything. Like you can just come in and shoot the sh We love that. We love that stuff. So it's all of that. I mean, our building, this building at least, is surrounded by murals from artists that we just love. And luckily they were nice enough to work with us to put up these murals on our building, which we appreciate so much. It's like a gallery and a store and a hangout and just a cool place to be and Sometimes we throw events where we just invite a couple of food trucks and tell everyone to come down and have a good time with us. So that's what we are. What I'm gonna miss the most about this location is just the sheer size of it. We have a massive building here and we're, we were able to do things like murals on the walls and we were able to like hang up massive pieces of artwork and have our statues spread out and I think in the next phase we're going smaller and like the, the store even though the store will be a little bit bigger like we won't have the office attached to it it'll be in a different area and the reason why we're doing that is because we want more foot traffic so the location that we pick for the store is actually in a really good foot traffic area so yeah I think just the ability the size and um, kind of just like having this as our own. This is like, it's always been like, this is the 3D retro building and designer con office. There's nobody really else here. There's not a lot of foot traffic, but this is ours. And even though that's going away, we know that in the long run, all the places and all the things that we're gonna do in Vegas is gonna benefit us. Whenever we were in Pasadena, I would always park my DeLorean 
in the front of the hall and people would take lots of pictures with it thinking like, oh man, they brought the Back to the Future car out, not knowing that it was just my car, <laughs> like just parked in front. Uh, there was a year where we had this huge Ron English Hulk statue in front of the convention center and we're like, like, is it possible? Are we gonna do this thing? And like, we were like, yeah, let's do it. And they put it in, they brought it up. And then the convention center was like, hey, you gotta get rid of this by Sunday, like midnight. And we're like, th we, we, don't, we don't know how to do that. Like we have no manpower. Like the company that brought it out here doesn't work the weekends. And we, I, I remember it was just like such a nightmare. Like moving this thing we had to like wake up like early early monday morning after the show and figure things out and we got it out of there but like we put it on like this little trailer and like covered it the best that we could and it was insane but that was like that was a lot of stress i believe so but there's always been like weird stuff like but yeah all in all at the end of the day it's just a lot of fun my desk is always a mess no matter what it's always been a mess when we moved into this office one of the things that was happening was i was like oh man i would my desk always has a ton of little things on it that i just get through my travels and my shows and just meeting people or like i'll go somewhere and get like a little knickknack or a keychain or something small and then it would just end up on my desk and it would just stay there and I remember one time seeing a picture of the CEO of Nike and his desk. And by the way, the CEO of Nike, like he is a major collector too. Like he has all kinds of stuff like in his office, but his desk was like a case, but it was still a desk. Like it had stuff in it and you can see all of it, but he still was using it as a desk. And I'm like, oh man, that's what I need. I need a desk where I can put all the stuff inside the desk where it's still visible, but I can still utilize the top of the desk as a desk. Like I could still put papers here and I can still talk to people, but everything in here is kind of like piled up. And so I had this desk built for me and over the years, I just keep adding into it. I like, like every year we do the show, I like I'll put the badges in there or I'll go on a trip and I'll maybe pick up a keychain or a key or, or a pin and I'll put it in there or I'll get a little booklet or a pamphlet or a ticket or a coin or a, you know, some kind of a wristband or something or I'll meet up with an artist and they'll give me some little figure that they made and they'll be like, this is for you. And I'll be like, oh my God, this is so cool. And I'll put it in my deck because it means something to me. And I know it looks like total freaking chaos in here. But you can point to anything in here and I will, it has a story to it. And I'll be able to tell you everything about that piece and where I got it and who gave it to me if I got it from them or where I bought it. And like, there is a story to everything in here. It's kind of like my life. It's, it's chaotic yet beautiful. And <laughs> like, I can tell you everything. It may seem like it's a bit, a bit much, but it all makes sense at the end. Yeah.